Trains travelling around tight curves or navigating intricate track switch and crossing layouts might seem effortless, but there is a hidden hero at work, the check rail. This often unnoticed but important rail component is essential for preventing derailments and ensuring your safe travel. This video will give you an understanding of what check rails are, where they're found and what they do. So what is a check rail? A check rail is a rail installed next to the running rail. It has a different profile with a flat surface facing the running rail. The check rail doesn't have a wheel run on it, but it does interact with the wheel as we'll see later. A feature of check rails is the section at the end, known as the flare. This ensures a smooth entry of the wheel into the checked rail area. In modern check rails, it is machined, but older style ones were achieved by bending the rail. The length of this flare depends on the line speed of the track on which the check is installed. When looking at check rails, there are some key measurements you need to know. First is check gauge. This is the distance between the running rail and the face of the opposite check rail. Then there is the flangeway gap. This is the gap that allows the wheel flange to pass between the check rail and the running rail it's next to. This is also sometimes known as free wheel clearance. Check rails are most commonly found in two places on the railway, within S and C and on tight radius curves. Let's have a look at the reasons why they're in these specific places. Within S and C, check rails are placed opposite the crossings. The function of the crossing is to allow the train wheel to pass over or through another rail. This allows lines to deviate from or cross over each other, a key function of S and C layouts. To do this, a gap in the rail running surface is needed to allow the flange to pass through. This is found within the centre of the crossing, just past the nose. Two things happen here and they're linked to each other and the need for a check rail. Firstly, the wheel must leave the railhead at the start of the gap and then be picked up by the rail at the end of the gap. This occurs in the area known as the wheel transfer area, between the nose and the wing rails. It is during the very short amount of time that the wheel is travelling over the gap that the second factor comes into play. There is no rail opposite to offer any lateral resistance. This means the wheel could move outwards and the flange or inner section of the wheel strike the crossing as it remounts the rail. In extreme circumstances, particularly on crossings with a flat angle, wheels could pass the wrong side of the crossing nose. So, bring in our check rail attached to the rail opposite the crossing. The check rail, if installed correctly, puts a limit on the amount of lateral movement the wheel can achieve, thereby reducing or removing the risk of the wheel passing the wrong side of the nose. By limiting this lateral movement, the check rail also protects the nose of the crossing from wear and batter. As it has a tapered and thinning section towards its tip, the nose is very susceptible to damage, which requires repair. This is a common maintenance defect picked up on routine inspections of the crossings. The damage comes from the wheel striking the rail. This can be caused by voiding, poor gauge management or high lateral forces due to the radius through the S&C. Check rails cannot solve voiding, but they can help with the gauge and lateral forces. In some instances, on tight radius S&C, the flangeway gap can be reduced to compensate for the high lateral loading and further protect the crossing nose. Tight radius curves. The second place check rails are found are on curves of tight radius. As they are installed along the full length of the curve that requires them, they are also known as continuous check rails. In the UK, any curve on a passenger line with a radius of 200 metres or less is required to have a continuous check rail with installation also considered when the curve is between 201 and 300 metres in radius. While the check rail on a tight radius performs the same function as in S and C, which is to restrain the lateral movement of the wheel, the reasons are slightly different. It needs to be remembered that trains have fixed axles, so both the wheels rotate at the same speed. Also, the wheel set that the axles and wheels are connected to the train body with often known as bogies, have limited or no rotation at all to them. This leads to a certain wheel behaviour when going round a curve and the way the train steers. This is accentuated when the radius of the curve is tight. It leads to what is known as a high angle of attack. This is the angle at which the wheel runs in relation to the rail. One of the places the highest angles of attack occur is on a tight radius curve. Now if you want to know more about angle of attack, I have a video on it with a link in the top right hand corner or down in the description below. Do check it out. With the wheel on the outer rail driving into the rail, it is in effect trying to climb the wheel face. 
In the right conditions, this could lead to a flange climb derailment. Any localised track faults that suddenly alter the wheel dynamics further, further increase the derailment risk. But how does a check rail help? Well, it provides a restraint for the other wheel, preventing lateral movement towards the outside of the curve and stopping that wheel further climbing up the outside rail. So now you know what a check rail is, where you're likely to find them, and how they help trains safely traverse sections of the railway network. I hope you found this video useful. If you want to know more about railway engineering, a great place to start is with our Track Component Guide ebook that is available at the link in the description. If you want a little added extra, by signing up to our email list at the link below, you'll get our free Guides Can ebook delivered straight to your inbox. Drop any comments or queries below, hit that like button, and do subscribe so you don't miss out on a single video.